Hi everyone, how's it going? It's Captain the 23 here. Today we're going to be doing a tune-up on a 3.5 horsepower Tecumseh engine. Now a 3.5 horsepower Tecumseh is actually getting kind of rare. You really don't see very many of these little engines anymore. But for the sake of all the people out there who I'm sure have them, I'm going to show you how to tune them up. This engine is mounted on a Troy-built Junior Tomahawk chipper. It is actually quite junior, it's really quite tiny. The engine is also very small. So you can see it in comparison to my hand. So the first thing we're going to do before anything else is a compression test by pulling the rope to see if the engine is good or not. Well, that really doesn't feel like it's got much compression, but the neighbor who I got this from said it was running, so I guess we'll proceed as normal. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the gas and see if it's fresh. Then we're going to clean out the air filter and the carburetor and we're going to clean the spark plug or maybe see if it needs to be replaced. And the gas is fresh. I just smelled it. So that's one thing we can tick off and the carburetor is probably not nearly as dirty seeing as the gas is nice and clean. If the gas was all old and smelly and gooey you definitely have to clean out the carburetor way more. So one very nice thing about these 3.5s is this is an adjustable carburetor. You can see we have the low speed adjustment right here. It's a little bit dirty, but you can see it. And then underneath here we have the high speed adjustment on the main jet. I almost forgot to check the oil on this. <clears throat> Let's see here. So the oil is very nice and clean. It's not dirty at all. If the oil was really black, and uh, dirty, we'd change it, but uh, that'd just be a waste of good oil if I change this oil, so put the cap back in, we're good. Might top it up a little bit, it's a little bit low. I'm going to remove this air filter here, which will do two things. It will let us examine the air filter and see if it's dirty, and it will also give us better access to the carburetor. So the air filter on this particular 3.5 horsepower is held on with uh, one screw at the top and one screw at the bottom. And uh, these are slotted screws. You need this kind of screwdriver. I believe it's either a slotted or a standard. It could be either. So we're just going to carefully undo them here. And try not to lose them when they come out. And there we go. Air filter is removed. So this air filter is really not that bad at all. There's very little dirt in it, maybe a little bit right there. But the thing that concerns me most is this is the carburetor plate and look at all this dirt. That's really not good. It means that dirt has been getting past the air filter and into the engine and I think that's why we don't have so much compression anymore because we've worn out the engine a little bit by sucking all that dust in. But hopefully this uh, engine's still good and uh, we can still tune it up. So, let's proceed as follows. So I'm going to take the bowl off of the carburetor next, which is this piece here to check for dirt in there. I suspect we'll find some because we've been sucking dirt in through the intake and that tends to get in there. So what we're going to do is some people can crimp off the fuel line if uh, you don't want gas to get in there. But since this engine is set up how it is, I'm simply going to prop this leg up on that toolbox so the gas in the gas tank, which is not actually that much, sloshes over here and away from the gas line and doesn't keep pouring into the carburetor when there's no bowl on it. All right. So uh, we're going to just loosen this nut on the bottom of the carburetor here, and gas will start leaking out in a minute. But we're just going to loosen it a little bit. You can see the gas leaking out now, draining out of the bowl. We'll pull this nut off. See, it stopped now. And this is the main jet right here with the adjustable screw on it. And I'll pull this bowl off now. Be a little bit sticky to get off. So here's the bowl of the carburetor. It's actually not as dirty as I thought it was going to be, but there's still a little bit of dirt in there. So we'll clean that all up. Okay, so we're going to wipe off the outside. You can see it was kind of covered in a little bit of bits of twigs and stuff. 
Then we're going to clean out the inside. If it's really, really dirty, use some carburetor cleaner or some gasoline to make sure you get all the dirt out. And you can see it's nice and squeaky clean in there now. Now we're going to clean off this main jet. Just going to wipe it off to start with. The jet holes on here do not look blocked, but I'm going to clean them anyway. We're going to remove the adjustment screw and clean that. See that's actually a bit dirty in there, so we'll get my towel and we'll just wipe that off. Make sure it's all cleaned. And make sure there's nothing in the threads or on the seals of the adjustment screw either. Don't want to damage these seals. They're kind of fragile. And uh, make sure there's nothing inside the jet. You can see light through it. And you can see light through all of the little pinholes on the sides. So now we'll put the jet back together again. I apologize for dropping it out of the frame just then. Put the jet back together. And we're ready to go. I still may blow some air through these little tiny holes just to make sure they're not blocked. But I can eyeball them right now and see that they're not, they don't seem to be anyway. But uh, it's a good idea to always clean them anyway just in case. Because you never know if they're blocked or not. Alright, now we're going to reassemble the carburetor. We're going to take the little bowl here. We're going to put the jet through it. And uh, there's this cutaway here, this cutaway part which is so that you can get a wrench in more easily and you want to leave that pointing towards the outside of the engine so that you can get to it more easily the next time you want to clean it out. Make sure it fits very snugly over this gasket here. If this gasket is damaged at all, replace it because your carburetor will leak. And now we're just going to screw the jet back in like this, mostly by hand. Then we're just going to snug it up a little bit with the, uh, the wrench. and we'll set this jet later when it's running. Okay, so now it's time to check the spark plug. So I'm gonna use my spark plug socket on a breaker bar. We're gonna remove this uh, spark plug lead here, the high voltage lead, and put it off to the side. So put it right there. Then we'll put our spark plug thing on and just knock it loose. Then we can take the socket off, or the breaker bar, and then screw it like this. Now this spark plug here really isn't even that dirty, but I'm going to clean it off anyway just to show you how. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to spray a little carburetor cleaner on it. There we go. And now we're just going to wipe it off with a rag. Just make sure we get all the carbon off of the electrode. And I just bumped the tripod. And uh, all of this surround here and just get it all nice and cleaned up and you can see that's good now, and uh, that should be firing well. Okay, we're going to put the spark plug back in now, so we're just going to start by tightening it up finger tight. Then we're going to get our wrench, and we're just going to snug it up a little bit. You don't want to do it too much, because you don't want to strip the threads of the engine, or make it so tight that you can't get it out the next time. So I'm just going to connect the high tension wire, and we're good. This particular engine has a loose bolt on the muffler, so I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. There we go. Okay, I've now cleaned the air filter, so I'm going to put it back into the metal housing, and then I'm going to screw it back onto the engine. Alright, we've now done all of the basic maintenance on the engine, so now we're going to fire the engine up and uh, take a look and adjust the carburetor now. We kind of screwed around with the adjustment on the main jet, and uh, we're going to adjust the uh, low speed idle as well. Although, on a machine like this with no throttle control, but you're not really going to be idling the engine, that's not as important. Um, if you're on a machine where you're going to be idling the engine all the time, well, yeah, you're definitely going to have to adjust the idle speed.
it just stalls. So I think it's not getting enough gas. So we're going to wind this uh, main jet screw out a bit and try again. That didn't help, so we're going to put it in a little bit now. As you can hear, the engine is now running very well. I didn't use any complex methodology to figure out how to tune the engine. I simply adjusted this by tuning it out a little bit and trying, and tuning it in a little bit and trying. There's no particular science, unless you're a professional, about adjusting these. You simply turn it until the engine runs well. That could be out a little bit or in a little bit. You just have to experiment with it for yourself. And as I mentioned, since the engine hardly ever runs on low, well, never really, we don't really have to adjust this screw at all. Thanks for watching.